to say that it's a worldwide event. It's the second largest in the world. It's the Rolls Royce event of its kind. It is the only event that has cakes that are on decorated tables. Everywhere else, it's always divisions and categories. But the concept here changed in 1996 when I decided it was time for the designers to see how their cakes would look. And so now it's become a world-class event. People come from all over the world. I even had one from this year from Papua New Guinea. I could not believe that they came in from there. It's amazing. And people all over that have driven or flown just to spend $10 to come in general admission to the Tulsa State Fair to see the Oklahoma State Sugar Art Show. It's amazing. At the Oklahoma State Sugar Art Show, we have the best of the best and the creme de la creme come in to really seriously compete for the title. And the people here who are competing are serious competitors who have worked damned hard for very many years. This is the best show, the best cake show that there is. And whether you're a cake professional or you're just someone who loves beautiful cakes, this is the place to be. instructors, Carolyn Mangold and myself and Sherry Elder, and what we did was we had 50 students and we put together the biggest, meanest, baddest Halloween cake ever. So we used 3,000 pounds of fondants, um, 75 cases of cake, uh, 30 buckets of buttercream, and yesterday we worked 12 hours and today we worked 8, 9, 10. So we've got 22 hours and thousands of pounds of sugar. I think it's great. I think everybody's happy. The students are excited and the flash photography is almost blinding. Everybody wants pictures. It's very exciting. So here we have the wedding cake and then of course we're right in the middle of the cemetery and we've got pumpkins everywhere because it's fall and right in the middle is the giant nine foot house. Actually I the house is nine feet and it sits on a giant mountain. And here are our gravestones and then once again, here's Mummy, and Mummy's dressed up for the wedding in her finery. She's got her sash on and her fancy handbag. And so this is the daughter, Mummy's little girl. <laughs> and Mummy's little girl we call the ghoul. And she is dressed up for Halloween. She's about three and a half feet tall. And then he is giving her his heart. She doesn't seem to be amused though. <laughs> you guys have done a phenomenal job working on this project. I know that our patrons are going to be thrilled and very enthusiastic to see your creation throughout the week. We're just so blessed to have you guys here and all your hard work will not go unrecognized. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
this is this is great. This is this cupcake competition where the, the contestants have one hour to create a, a fairy tale cupcake. I believe they uh, have to use 200 cupcakes and the, the, use the, also the fairy tale theme. We've got uh, displays. Somebody's working on a Humpty Dumpty. Somebody's doing the Three Little Pigs. We've got Jack and the Beanstalk and Pussycat, Pussycat. So I'm really excited to see what everybody's going to come up with. They have to assemble everything on site, but of course they've got the cupcakes already baked off. Some of the parts are already made where they're using the gum paste. They've tinted their fondant because that, you know, takes a little bit longer. But they're rolling things out now, cutting them, shaping everything, and really doing an amazing job. Everybody loves to, to learn and seeing people do, you know, their handiwork right in front of you and it's sweet and at the end it's going to be something adorable and completely amazing. It's sweet, the sugar is in the air. three different size cupcakes and using them all in very different ways yeah. is really, really very, yeah, very she's smart. Got, she's got height, she's got <laughs> texture. It's very difficult to judge a competition that has a theme-less division like the Grand National Wedding Cake Competition because every cake is different. If you make them do a purple cake with three flowers on it and they're all the same color and they're exactly the same flowers, it's apples and apples. But we're not looking at apples and apples, we're looking at lots of apples and oranges all mixed up and they just throw them in the air and where they fall. And there's so many of them that the poor old judges are just about 
drained of any energy levels by the time they're finished. They even reserve the right to come back the next day to double check in case they did tire, became a little tougher. Um, you start off in the early part where you're easier on them because you save points because you think down there you might find something better that you need those points for. And so I make them walk the room first. Get a really good idea of the quality of what's going on. Then for them to go seriously judging and pulling it apart because oftentimes the most spectacular thing up close and personal might have the most awful, awful flaws. So then they have to reassess where they're going. But it's a really long-winded process because when you have 80 cakes in the room, it's really tough because you have to give them at least 10 to 15 minutes. If you add that time up over the course of a day, they started at 10 yesterday morning and they finished at 10.30 last night. It's a long day. By then, they're, you know, When I walk up to a cake, the first thing we look for is overall aesthetic appeal. Um, that is blending of colors, neatness, um, technical skills. Um, the table coverings have to blend in with the overall cake, which in some of these is instead of benefiting them is hurting them. Detracts. Yes, it distracts yes. from. And it's it's not in the UK. And not in the UK we, we, either. We, we don't have a competition like this where each cake is on its own table okay. and the table dressing is part of the presentation. So for me this is something This is new. Some, Do you like it better? Oh very much so. Yeah. Very much so. This show, this this sugar art show in Tulsa, Oklahoma is the one that sets the standard worldwide for the most incredibly intricate and interesting cakes. Because here we encourage them to reach for the sky, take the sun. If you don't get to the sun this year, I'm happy with the moon, but keep, keep on keeping on. Because everywhere else, there's so many rules that tie you up where there's things you can't do. And here, I want creativity and innovation. And I get it because I don't put too much of a roadblock in their way. So as a result of that, we have some incredibly interesting techniques that develop that people abroad are looking at and thinking, wow. to them, you have to choose the best cake in the room because I am going to be giving that cake $15,000 plus merchandise. That's a lot of money for the cake. Don't get it wrong. As far as trends are concerned, uh, for me at the moment, it used to be very white on white, and now we're looking to a lot more color coming into cake, a lot more color in weddings. Bridesmaids' dresses are busier, uh, people are heading back to the 50s and the 40s in design style, strong lips, strong structure in clothes, and you're seeing a lot of that coming and happening in the cakes. will never be dead. Everybody will always have flowers. It's just how it's going to be. But I think that people are more interested in looking at things that are more, a little more complicated in a clean way. I don't mean cluttered, but they're thinking of ideas. They're bringing their own personalities into the cake. Where before, it was always just make a cake, make it white, put some roses, put some leaves, put something on the top, bride and groom. So 
So now, um, people are tending to create their own things and they like bows and they like them made out of sugar. They don't really care about them being made out of paper or satin ribbon or something like that. Everything's edible and the sky's the limit with what you can create. Sugar Art Show is the only sugar art show in the whole wide world as far as I am concerned.